be it stories coveted through long years of popular reading or the latest bestseller being turned into a motion picture, the art of bringing characters from the page to the screen is difficult to master. Authors, when writing, fuel the reader's imagination. The castle of Hogwarts or the face of Frankenstein's monster is different for every reader. Filmmakers attempt new techniques, pushing the boundaries of the box that is the filmmaking of their era to paint pictures that were only present in the reader's mind. When we think of movie adaptations of our favorite books, what comes to mind is Harry Potter, The Lord of the Rings, or The Hunger Games. I'm sure everyone's heard of these stories, whether they're the pride of your bookshelf or the most watched on your streaming service. But this isn't about pop culture sensations. Today, let's talk about five movies based on classics and how these noteworthy stories went from the ink of the page to the curtain of the screen. To Kill a Mockingbird To Kill a Mockingbird is a novel written by American author Harper Lee. It was published in 1960 and a mere two years later was adapted to the big screen in the form of a motion picture. Let's talk, about, let's talk a bit about how the idea for the novel was developed. Harper Lee studied law at the University of Alabama, but she left New York City without earning a degree. She struggled to make a livelihood while trying to juggle her writing career until her friends helped her financially, due to which she could write full time. The story of Two Killer Mockingbird is partly based on one of the cases that Harper Lee took on and lost during the course of her education. The character of Atticus is also modeled with Lee's own father, father's image in mind. The story follows Jean Louise Finch, or Scout, and her brother Jem as they uncover the secrets of their neighbor, Boo Radley. Elsewhere in the legal world, Scout's father, Atticus Finch, takes on the case of a black man accused of sexually assaulting a white woman. The novel is written through the eyes of a seven-year-old Scout, and the narration shows it. Adapting the novel to the screen required not only a change of perspective, but also a change of style. However, the 1962 adaptation of the film does a great job of bringing the characters of Scout and Jem to life, while also bringing light to Car Atticus's character outside of the context of being Scout's father. The storyline of the film follows that of the book almost word to word, staying true to the elements presented by Harper Lee. Pride and Prejudice is one of the most well-known classics, dissected over and over by critics book and film reviewers, and almost every person on the internet. The novel, written by Jane Austen, was published in 1813 and has since been adapted for the screen several times. The most re recent adaptation of 2005, directed by Joe Wright, is a favorite of period drama lovers. Jane Austen, the author of Pride and Prejudice, is widely known for making the novel what it is today and absolutely should be talked about. She was one of the first people to write books about people in the in their everyday lives while incorporating brilliantly flawed yet lovable characters in her narratives. Interestingly, Jane Austen didn't have to venture beyond her own home because her vividly creative family gave her a base to build characters with all the realism of the lively yet not so ideal family of the time. Her novels became the novels of manners of her time, but her works are studied even today in classrooms and are widely dissected and used for theses and literary research works. Pride and Prejudice is probably the most famous of Austen's novels alongside Emma. Narrating the plot of Pride and Prejudice is almost redundant, but it features a 20-year-old Elizabeth Bennet and her family, a marriage-minded mother, a frustrated father, her elder sister Jane, and her younger sisters, Mary, Lydia, and Kitty. The story is set in motion with the arrival of Mr. Darcy and his friend Mr. Bingley. From the very beginning of the novel, the two protagonists' dispositions and their attitudes towards the world set them apart and against each other. Over the course of several balls and chance encounters, they work their way through the prejudice, obscuring their view of the real person underneath. It's a romantic story, even without the intricate soundtrack, glittering visuals, and the famous hand flex. Joe Wright brings stuff to the story that modern audiences are more likely to love stuff that may be a little impossible in the reality of the Regent Sierra, but makes everyone's hearts flutter nonetheless. The hand flex, the disappearing ballroom, and of course Darcy's famous confession of being bewitched body and soul. All of it cre creates a grandeur that goes beyond Mr. Darcy's wealth and Elizabeth's prospects. The change in dialogue may take away from original words, 
but it adds a definite dreamy flair to the well-loved romance. The movie won four Oscars and remains a favorite classic. The color purple as a project brought onto the screen is magnificent because the novel is originally an epistolary novel, meaning it's written in the form of letters, which in this case are addressed to God. The book was written by Alice Walker, an American writer whose works focus on African-American characters and their experiences, particularly focusing on women. Alice Walker was involved in the civil rights movement and was an active participant in the struggle. The Color Purple is one of her most famous novels, which won her a Pulitzer Prize. Her later actions and words were considered controversial by many, but she remains an important name in the history of African-American writings. To describe the plot of the novel, Sally is the protagonist of the novel. She's a black woman who's been oppressed and abused her entire life by her stepfather. She's married to a man named Albert, who, simply she, who she simply refers to as Mr. with a blank for his name. In the course of the novel, Sally meets Shug Avery, who is initially introduced as Albert's mistress, but eventually becomes a friend and then a lover to Sally. She inspires Sally to leave Mr. and start living her own independent life. The book includes several other characters who play a role in bringing to light the themes of racism, oppression, assault and abuse, gender stereotypes and the toxicity that arises from them, and many more. The novel depicts the gritty reality of a black female and the influence over her thinking patterns that a drastically tyrannical society creates. The narration of the novel is heart-wrenching and often detailed and intricate. Transforming this narration into a script is a difficult task. Both the actors and the director should be commended for the work on the film. Steven Spielberg manages to capture the emotions of the characters with the same depth that the novel does. However, the movie fails to depict the exact grittiness of the novel. Many of the elements, the more explicit parts of the novel, the romantic relationship between Shug and Sally, and more, are excluded from the film. This might be in part due to censorship of content, but it certainly changes the underlying vulgarity of the story. The movie was nominated for 23 Oscars and won 14 of them. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott was published in two volumes in 1868 and 69. Let's talk about the author first. Louisa May Alcott is widely known for her children's books alongside this novel. Her father educated her, but she ultimately realized that with his disposition, he was incapable of financially providing for the family. Worried about the family's needs, Louisa worked odd jobs for a while before finally taking up writing. The novel Little Women is semi-autobiographical, based on the lives of her sister and mother. To talk about the novel, it follows the March sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth and Amy, on their journey from being little women to becoming mature and gaining, gaining satisfaction in their own lives. They befriend Laurie, who eventually ends up being a very important part of their lives. The novel is very well known and a pretty good first read for people trying to get into classics. The 2019 movie directed by Greta Gerwig only makes the story better by incorporating scenes with a strong feminist undercurrent, such as the one with Joe and Meg's conversation about the ideal life they want to live. The scenes are very subtly yet beautifully changed to give a more dramatic flair to the story. The climax scene at the train station being a glaring example. In the book, the proposal to Joe is made on a simple walk together, but Greta Gerwig's twist makes the climax a lot more emotional and the ending a lot more satisfying. Made in 2019, the film is clearly adapted towards a more modern audience, yet retains the original structure and tone of the novel near perfectly. Romeo and Juliet The tale of the star-crossed lovers is known to everyone, and so is Shakespeare. But still, let's talk about the Bard of Avon. He wrote in the 16th and 17th century, producing over 150 sonnets and over 35 plays, including comedies and tragedies. A lot of his life, especially the biographical details, are known through official or legal documents. But the more people study his works, the more they've discovered about him. A lot of his plays are based on his own experiences, along with his imaginative and brilliant mind and they explore human relationships and emotions, 
something that most playwrights of the times did not deal with. Seeing is how the play came out so many years ago, we all know its plot. In the play, Romeo and Juliet are part of opposing houses. They meet and fall in love on the first day, get married, and then are separated. Due to an error in communication, Juliet takes her own life and Romeo follows her. These are spoilers, but it's been years, so. Romeo and Juliet was written as a play and has been performed countless times over the centuries in theatres, schools and colleges. So it's not surprising that the play has several on-screen adaptations as well. The 1936, 1954, 1996 and 2013 versions follow the storyline pretty closely, but the play has been changed to accommodate modern audiences many times. And it's been interpreted in various languages and in various settings. The story has been glamorized and modernized several times. The portrayal of the main character shifts with every new adaptation. There is no particular technique that can advance the already dramatic story written for the screen. But with the passing years, the change in the style of language, and if we're to be sentimental, the very passage of time is visible. Cinema is a visual representation of all of the stories that audiences have loved, whether they were written as a script or a narrative novel. With the efforts, or efforts of directors and filmmakers to bridge the gap between vivid imagination of written fiction and the grandeur of the big screen are laudable. Thank you so much for watching.